Depression, death, and a plethora of ghosts await us as we return to Cheshire. Oh, Fielding, and this week I would like to invite you to join my team as we return to one of Britain's oldest and scariest locations. Welcome to Most Haunted and the Mansion, Tatton Park. The estate was in the hands of the Edgerton family from before 1600, though the land itself has been inhabited since 8000 BC. The present edifice stands on the site of John Edgerton's original house dating from the late 18th century. At the height of the Edgerton's fortunes, the estate boasted over 25,000 acres. It's now a more modest 2,000, with the mansion itself set within 1,000 acres of walled parkland. It passed to the National Trust in the late 1950s on the death of Maurice, the last Lord Edgerton. The house is said to be alive with spiritual activity, all connected with the Edgerton occupation. Present-day staff report odd but not unpleasant odours, unexplained clusters of flies in certain parts of the house, the sense of having been touched by unseen hands, disembodied voices, shuffling footsteps echoing down empty corridors, and perhaps most unsettling of all, sightings of various dark apparitions and spirits, both in the house and in the gardens. With so many stories of ghosts said to plague this mansion, who would be brave enough to spend a night alone and in the dark here? Well, that's exactly what Kath and I did, and this is what happened. It's dark, isn't it? Did you hear that? I heard that people. I heard about people. What was the problem? It was a woman in the mood. There's that. Listen. Can you hear it? No, it's talking. There's nobody here. Is there anybody here? <laughs> it's a picture. <laughs> They're scary, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, God. Are you really scared? What's that? I heard a clink in there. That's the library, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Why do I have to go for it? Because you've got a camera. Come on. Don't you think we're being brave, me and you? No. What was that? I don't know. That's another moan. Is it a moan? Yeah, that's two moans I heard. Come on, let's go. Let's sidestep out. <laughs> what, like the whole. What are you running for? Don't run. Oh, look at your TV. I just trying to get this right now. We have to run. No. What? 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 It's only those jingling. <sighs> Which way? I don't know. We're going to wait. Come this way, this way, this way. What? Out? Left, left, left. The voices and noises that Kath and I heard certainly gave us cause for concern regarding the coming night's investigation. Now, normally we start our investigation inside our chosen location, but this place is so full of ghosts, there isn't enough room for any more. And so our first phantom has been relegated to suffer the harsh seasons alone and outside. The ghost of Lady Charlotte Edgerton is said to roam the gardens and grounds of this delightful mansion. It is thought that she's trying to make her way to the house, but never quite gets there. <laughs> Ah! 
The main haunting in the library centres around this area. After setting these chairs and retiring for the evening, the owners come down in the morning only to find them rearranged, as though a nightly game of chess had been played by a group of unseen phantoms. I've experienced um, the doors rattling in the tenants' hall in the early hours of the morning. And also a colleague of mine and myself, uh, one early morning, witnessed a figure walk past one of the doorways. After the death of her two eldest sons, one in infancy and one in his twenties, Lady Anna was struck down with severe depression, making her a very stern woman indeed, which affected everybody around her. She would have spent many melancholy hours here in the lemon room and next door in the chintz bedroom. And some believe she's still here, as the rug by this fire seems to move on its own as though it's being tidied. Many people complain of feeling depressed and uneasy when entering the rooms, and in the dead of night, a low murmuring can be heard when both areas are thought to be empty. This dining room is the only room to date back to the original dwelling, and so could that be the key to the hauntings that plague it? Elizabeth Sykes was a woman who loved this place so much that she refuses to leave and has been seen here on a regular basis by staff and guests alike, walking endlessly around. She's also blamed for violently rattling the door. But why? Is she trying to get out or is something trying to get in? We have 24 hours to find out. With such a fascinating history and so much reported activity, what would Dr. Kieran O'Keefe be expecting from the coming investigation? Well, Kieran, we've come back to Cheshire, we've come back to the, the Tatton Park estate. How do you think this investigation is going to differ from the previous one? Well, already this particular house, as opposed to the old house, is dynamically very different. Any items that are here are all original to the house. And it will start to play on people's imagination a little bit. They'll immediately put themselves in that environment of a very, very old manor house and expect things to be jumping out. One of the phenomena caught here and witnessed here is a door that shakes violently. What do you think can cause that? The first thing I'd be looking for is drafts. Having discounted that, we'd have to make sure that nobody further out in another part of the building has shut a door and caused an internal draft which would make the door move. If we can discount those natural explanations and it still occurs, then it's very interesting and possibly paranormal. Kieran's sceptical misgivings would be put to the test as David Wells began his initial reading of Tatton Park Mansion. It seems a very matriarchal house. It doesn't mm. feel dominated by big, angry blokes. But there's also a woman in a white shift, kind of... She's got, she's got the skirt. Oh, she's, she's running. Yeah, oh, she's, right, right, right. She storms around a lot. I mean, she moves very fast, like breakneck speed. I know it sounds like an odd thing to say, but I can almost taste her. I can taste her. He's banging away. I should feel as if I'm right in her life. David Wells started his customary first reading outside in the gardens of the house. Would he pick up on the spirit of Lady Charlotte Edgerton, who supposedly walked this area? Do you think there is you know, any ghosts, any presences outside? There's horses and just stuff you would expect yeah. to, to, you know, you get all of that residual stuff. But there's also um, a woman in a white shift kind of... It's, it's a gown, it's not her underwear or anything. And she sort of swishes right up the path towards the house. So she kind of, in a hurry, I don't know if she's running, I don't know, she's got, she's got the skirt. Oh, she's, she's running. Yeah, oh, she's right, running. right, right, yeah, okay. Sorry. And time period? Probably, um, probably 1700s. Any name with her? 
She's the title. I mean, she's got a title. Lady, Lady something. something or other, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I saw was like in the corner, you know, the corner of the eye stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people might see. Right. They might see her. Well, that's interesting. It is. What do you make of that? Well, the fact that David, people have seen it and then David's picked it. up on it. I defy us to visit any manor house where you don't get some reports of an apparition outside the manor house. What would be interesting is if David picks up on the name later on and that ties in with the history. What I find interesting is the fact that people see this woman in, in this exact spot running up here. For me, it's the psychological. Are, are our eyes playing tricks on us? Is there suggestion to people know that this figure is here? And if we are getting corner of the eye, especially at night time, we're going to see something white move across okay. because of the way our eyes adjust at night. All right. Well, if anybody comes out here later on, it's interesting to see if they see something mm. white flashing by. Right. The only, the only whisper in here is a female who is um, one woman in here who I don't know if they actually hold dinners in here. They probably don't anymore. It seems as if she's she's hosting it, so she's very um, she's very sort of like come in, have a look. Dark haired woman, mm -hmm. a dark haired woman, quite petite. Is she a good looking woman? Should have really asked me for. I think <laughs> <laughs> um, she's just got one of those. Aristocratic faces. Okay, and and what time period are you putting her at? Probably 1700s. I think it's quite early in the history. It seems like it seems a very matriarchal house already. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mm. feel dominated by big angry blokes. What did this woman die of? Did she did she die of natural causes and live to a ripe old age, or or did something else happen to her? I think she died of natural causes. I don't I don't sense anywhere in the house any. Just wrapping, tapping going on. And uh, there's a generic name, which is Elizabeth, so it's one of those kind of... Can you possibly give me a surname with this Elizabeth lady? Um, is that tapping? Just tapping, yeah. OK. There's the, there's the family name, which is... There's Edgerton. Mm -hmm. So it should be Lady Edgerton, I guess. So Lady Elizabeth Edgerton. And is she a happy soul? Yeah, she... she's, she's quite bossy, I have to say. So she really was the lady of the house, as it were? Yeah, yeah. And she's, she's, she's actually using the phrase, she's the lady of the proper house. Oh, she yeah. maybe sees other bits as add-ons. Right. There's a second name, which is Sykes, as well, so maybe they've got a middle name, I don't know. If they've got... Now that we have a surname and right. you've given us a, a, a period, could you, could you possibly give us the date that she died, the year that she died? I would say it's on the... It's, I don't know if it's between the 18, the 17 and the 18 border, it's kind of in that, that kind of area, so where I'd want to go. I haven't got anything concrete, though. OK. Now, I'm going to ask you to look at some of these pictures. Some of the ladies on here, of course, were called Elizabeth. Okay. I just want you to have a look and see if you are seeing the same as, okay. as what's presented here. Man, yeah. OK. Um... It's probably that one because she's the youngest one. Right. These these are too old. Really, okay. For what I'm seeing. That's right. That 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 is the that right is picture. Okay. okay. And is that how you're seeing her in your mind's eye? Is that how she's presenting to you? Um, the gown's different. She's not wearing that gown. The face is very similar. Like I said, it's that. Uh, no you offense. Did. No you offense did. to royalty, but it's that Princess Anne look, isn't it? Yeah. Very skin, noble but, yeah. face. Mm. Okay. But the gown's different. I would say the gown is. Um, is lighter, much lighter. And what do you think that she would do? I mean, I know she, she, she's banging, she's causing the rapping that we can hear, but what else do you think that she could do in this room or in this house? What um, do you think she's capable of? She storms around a lot. I mean, she moves very fast when she does move. She is moving at breakneck speed. So she may make, she may cause things to, like, you know, like, like the ball here might, might shudder. Do you know that kind of, mm -hmm. like, tapping, or the doors might bang, right. that sort of thing, really. Would she enjoy the fact that we were here? The fact that she's, she's rapping to let us know when we're talking about her? Yeah, I think she would enjoy it, yeah, absolutely. But there has been a phenomenon witnessed in here. OK. So who's causing it? What's going on? I've got a feeling of uh, 
quite a plump man. You no know, middle of 1700s again, I would say. I would go for the name of William. And I think if you've got a phenomenon in here, it's going to be movement again. He seems to come in here. He might peruse the, the books a bit, um, but I think the chairs might move. Why does he like to move the chairs? Well, I think he may be... I know it's set out for chess, but it seems like he's maybe playing cards, to be honest. Okay. More like a card game he plays. He seems quite solitary, and if anything, I would say he was playing like a game of patience. So he, something he, like that. So he's not aware, maybe, of, of the other spirits here in this Possibly house? Possibly not aware at all. No. But what we will see is, is, is hopefully the movement of the chairs. Yeah, or even, you know, the leather moving, the sort of like, you know, that... Ah, oh, indentation. Yeah. Yeah. But what's his connection to the house? I think he's a former owner. I think he's a former. He's certainly not. He's not anyone who built it or or worked here. Because I don't think anyone who worked here would dare, you know, do something. I think he's a former owner. William. Any William. surname? Edgerton. Edgerton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I would say around at the same kind of. You know, it's hard. The time periods are very hard here because there's a. There's a gap. There seems to be quite a gap. Maybe the house was left and lonely for a bit, you know, because people go off and travel and all that. It. it feels like a, a gap from someone as well here. Okay. A withdrawal, if you like. So this is a good place to do a vigil then, obviously, mm -hmm. and call out for William, William Edgerton. Mm -hmm. How old was lord, he when he died? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I would say he was a Lord. Um, I think he was probably 70s. Right, so yeah, quite so. elderly. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. I just have to ask you, the woman outside, any names with her yet? Um, the only name is quite modern and it's, um, she would, it's Charlotte, but she seems to be called Charlie, which is, oh. I don't know whether people would abbreviated it at the time. And is it the same family name or is yeah. it? Yeah, she seems like part of the family. So Charlotte Edgerton. Yeah, and it's really, it's so matriarchal, this place. Mm. It's really matriarchal, you know. So we're basically going to come across a lot of strong Lots women. Lots of women, strong women. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully William will come across you later. Let's move on. With expectations high of meeting strong female energies, we switched to night vision and took the stairs to the first floor landing, ready for a night of surprises. And what are you feeling on the stairs? There is actually one here. There's oh, a good. female here. I think she watches people. I don't know where that goes. Is that is that the entry hall or, or something down there? She might watch see. people. That's further down on the right. ground oh, floor. Oh, it is, yeah. So she watches people there. coming in and out. Ah, oh, right, OK. So I think that's what she does. So I would say um, the name would be Mary, but it's common as, you know. OK. And where would she... Is she from this area, do you think? Or do you think she's from somewhere else? Um, I think she's local. Right. Um, I think she may have lived in the house... And I would go with a Mac something. It's a Macintyre and Macintosh. Right. So Macintyre and Macintosh, one of the two. And she would have been she would have been early eighteen hundreds, not seventeens, early eighteens, maybe mid eighteen. And why is she haunting here? I, I know it sounds bizarre, but very often when you do get these grand dams, these older um, aristocracy, there seems to be someone looking after them. It's like when you get kids. Yes, you've always often an adult, said you know? there's an, always an adult or mm. a governess or something mm. like that. There's all, and there have been many times, haven't there, Kieran? Mm. Maids or people looking after mm. the hierarchy, which is what you've just said, mm, yeah. Definitely. Do you want to move away from here? Yeah, yeah. let's go. This is, um, this is an interesting space. This is a Lady Bracknell space. A handbag? <laughs> a handbag. Is it? Yeah, very much like that. It's very dowagerish, you know, um, off. Um, very strong in here. Right. So recent passing because it's so strong, really strong. The name I'd, I'd give her would be Anna. 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 Um, and when you say quite recent passing, how long ago? Oh, I mean, really, like last century, so the 20th century, possibly. I know it sounds like a odd thing to say, but I can almost taste her. She's so, do you know what I mean? It's a bit Hannibal yeah. Lecter, but I can taste her. Right. Um, She's banging away. Do you want to move further in? Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting in her space a little yeah, bit, if that's just possible. Yeah, walk over the ropes. And... Yeah, walk over the ropes. But it actually feels like her stuff to me. I actually feel as if I'm right in her life here. I'd say that she's, um, she's a quiet woman again. Um, a lot of time in bed as well, so maybe it wasn't that much Healthy. Of a, yeah, possibly. How old was she healthy. when she passed over? Oh, God, she seems... 
I think she's probably in her 70s, 80s again. They, they, they seem like quite an old bunch. Really. And it is Edgerton again, is it? Yeah. So it's yeah. Anna Edgerton. Yeah, Lady. Lady Anna Edgerton. Okay. Loss of children, one possibly during the war. Um, Loss of children? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple of kids that oh. have been lost. One seems to have possibly during the war and another one is a child, maybe an accident. What do you think we've, we will come across? I here? think people will get that smell, will get a smell from her as she, <laughs> she walks past. Um, I think people may feel, um, sorry, I should really just grab my ear. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's not, not necessarily, maybe she's just saying, pay attention, young man. <laughs> it's oh, one really? of those kind of like, gosh, she's really pulled my ear. Um, Maybe if I just shut up for half a second and listen to what the woman was trying to tell me. Go on. I think she's sometimes aware of people coming through here. And I think that, that would clearly upset her because it feels like a very private space. She's almost right up to these ropes, almost defending her space, oh. you know? And I think if they, put, if they move things around too much in here, they will, she will move them back. So you might get things moving around in here. So, obviously, she's not going to like us being here, is she? No, I don't think she's very comfortable with it. I think she... But because of the... She does seem... She would have known what we're doing. Lady Anna Edgerton, please, we don't mean you any harm. Do we have your permission, please, to try and talk to you later on this evening? We would like to try and have a conversation with you. Are you agreeable to this? Not twice for yes, once for no. No. Just one. Okay. Uh, oh, just... She just pulled your ear again. Yeah, she keeps playing with my ear. Oh, she doesn't like it, does she? <laughs> Shall we move out of this room and, and definitely yeah. come back as a group? There, there, just before we go, there's a man outside. I'm, I'm aware of a man standing outside. When you say outside, you mean outside the whole building? Or outside no, outside this room? the store, a little fat man. And this one's wearing like a boost jacket. A what? <laughs> a boost jacket. A boost oh, jacket. is he? Yeah. So, a traveller? Yeah. yeah, definitely. From what time period? Again, he seems modern and connected to this woman, so maybe a son or um, a husband. That's interesting. Any name with him? Not at the moment. What's the matter? Sorry, he, he just got a bit confrontational there. As, as we went to go to the steps, which I think are about there, he did one of those oh, right no. in the face jobs. But well, why would An he do energetic. that? Um, just asserting his authority, I think. I, again, I don't think he's not... He's not a nasty piece of work, not at all. But he would most definitely know about. Somebody down there? Is there somebody down there? I can tell you. Hello? Okay, if there's somebody down there, can you just say hello? Just speak up. It was definitely a movement, wasn't it? It wasn't. Do you know what it sounded like to me? It sounded like a, a, a lady or a girl sneezing, like a. Yeah. Yeah, it was that kind of noise, you're right. You say he's wearing you describing a bush jacket. Mm. That to me means somebody that you know went away and, and, and travelled in the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. It's very kind of Indiana Jonesy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Name. The, the the name that comes to mind is um, Morris or Maurice. Maurice. Okay. Right. Again, he would have died old, like in his eighties. You know, yeah. he's he's not a young man. Okay. No, you 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 you're right. Okay. That, that's you know. He's a nice soul. He's a nice soul, and I think he's a sympathetic soul, and would understand what we're doing. Maurice, Lord Maurice, are you here? If you are, please, can you do something? You know why we're here, I think. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. What? what did, you did you hear that? Cry out. Yeah, like a. Ooh. Maurice, if that was you, please, can you cry out again so we can hear you? I definitely heard it the first time. It was definitely there. Oh, I think we might be in for it. Interesting night. Interesting night. night. Interesting Not a scary, night. scary, but no. an interesting night. There's some, definitely some interesting characters. Mm, there is. But would they remain and try to communicate with us? And who else would come from the shadows in the coming hours? <laughs> As darkness draws in, the team are now ready to continue their investigation. What would lie in wait for us? Whoa! 
Park Mansion was alive with strong female energies. The team moved to the Lemon Room with expectations of making contact with Lady Anna, mother of Maurice. Annie, are you here? You are here. Is it true? Did you lose two children? I'm sorry about that. I really am. Do you see your children now? I don't know. One, mm. Why don't you see your children now? Why not? Well, because they could have moved on. They could have, they could have moved on. It's, they could have even reincarnated by the time she crossed. Or um, she, if she's trapped here, they could have gone somewhere else. Annie, are you trapped here? Do you feel trapped? No. Just one again. Yeah. No. Can we pinpoint where the noise is coming from? It sounded like they were coming from. Around yeah. you guys and around, just you can't pinpoint it. It seems to move. There's a couple that seem to, to to come from almost between you and I. Yeah. The first lot, lot seem to come from the actually the bed. The bed itself, I thought, for the first few. Yeah. Could you perhaps shake the bed or move the bed for us? Oh, bless her. I know she she doesn't want to do anything because she feels we're int intruding, and I know that. I she wants us to leave. Do you want us to leave, Annie? No. Just one. Just one. It's that heartbeat noise again, mm. listen. Mm. Annie, is there any way perhaps you could just gently do something so we know that you're here? Perhaps shut one of the doors, move this bed. I heard a high pitched noise just as you were saying, move uh, the bed. Really? You, she, you know what? <laughs> I nearly said that because she did that in my ear. She hummed in my ear. Did she? She just went, mm. Can you hum again? Please hum again, Annie. She's definitely here. She's very strong. She's a real thing about your ears, though, doesn't it? For me, she's constantly on the ear. Should we keep moving? After our successful contact with Lady Anna, we moved to the landing, hoping to re-establish a rapport with the servant girl, Mary. It's a constant cold breeze, is it? It's not coming down from... It's not... What was that? There's nothing. There's nothing. Oh, did you hear that? Down, oh, yeah. Just let me test it again. I was not like that. I thought it's not coming from here. Sworn I heard of breezes. It stopped coming down from. It's not. What was that? I didn't hear it. But yeah. Didn't you say it wasn't there? Your mic would have got it. Yeah. Mary, please knock twice for yes, once for no. Are other other spirits? What was that? I'm sorry. I... Are other other spirits? Did, did, did you hear it, Jeff? I did, yeah. Right. I heard it. Well, that's what I heard before when I put my arm up, like oh. a... Can you hear that banging? Yeah. Deep, that distant pounding. Don't come over there. Mary, could you just tap out how many other spirits are present in this house? No, that was a lot more than five. That was very distant. It's either someone walking or that's tapping and it's coming from above, isn't it? Well, that is what the There's nobody above. above. It sounded like it was running then, didn't it? it so. Well, quick walking, wasn't it? Dun, mm. dun, dun. Oh, it's, it's just that tapping. There it is again. And this is the way up to the servants' quarters, isn't it? This Mary's in. Mm. Oh, that's a point. Mary, do you want us to go up to the servants' quarters? Is that a yes? Yes. That's getting louder, isn't it? It's distant. It is distant. It's above. Mm. Encouraged by the tapping that seemed to emanate from the now disused area of the old servants' quarters, we decided to break into two groups. Kieran, Ian and Jeff went downstairs to the kitchens, while Stuart, Carl and I went upstairs to further investigate the series of tappings. You want Stuart? Yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. What's in there, girl? Oh, right, okay. Can you go in? Quite big, quite big servants' rooms, 
svetlo ud. Hvor så? Og jeg hørte dig om det, ja. Kom til lige her. Jeg er så bange engang. Hvor er Hello? Can you hear the tap Yeah. Tap tap. It's right underneath our feet now. I don't like that at all. Why not? It's only what we're normally used to. I know, but when it's that close, it's right, it's, it's, it's right on the <gasps> Oh, f That was a massive bang. Someone trying to communicate or just just odd banging. Okay, it sounds like someone walking about, isn't it? Is there anybody upstairs? Above us? Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What? What did you hear? You know when someone's carving something and you just hear what instead of going ch ch ch, it was just the one. The yeah. What's that? The what door, was it? The door shut. It just must be a bad hinge. We'll just leave it like that and see if it shuts again. I think I had one error. So we can hear the banging. Yeah. Telling us are here. Telling us here is like knock knock. Hello, I'm here. How nervous are you, Steve? I'm very nervous. Oh my God! It's it going again. It's going again. Listen. But that's different from before. Are you angry with us? Not twice for yes, once for no. It's random. It's random. Yeah, but... Just stop, just like that. Please, come on, do something else. Shut the door.
What with tappings and banging doors upstairs and growling dogs close to the kitchen, what more could possibly be revealed by Tatton Park Mansion? I constantly feel like something's behind me. Our investigation of Tatton Park Mansion was proving to be very successful in terms of provoking paranormal activity. Carl, Stuart and I continued our vigil in the servants' quarters, while Kieran, Ian and Jeff struggled to rationalise what could have made the animalistic noise they had heard in the kitchen. I wonder if they really do have a dog. I'm going to have a look. I'm not going to look open the door. No, please don't. So what dog was that then? Come on, do something. Touch one of us. I know you're up here. Be nice. Are you a maid? Are you a servant? I'm not doing anything. No, I'm not. I'm not touching you. You are. I wasn't. You were pushing my hand down. I wasn't. I had hold of your hand. Yeah, but you were doing that. I wasn't. My hand went down with yours. Yeah, well, I thought you were pu pushing no, my hand down. I wasn't. Then. Right, with all due respect, I want you to drop me off now, back downstairs, and you two can carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on, we're going. I'm not into this pain in the chest thing. Right? Well, Stuart, keep hold of my hand. No, yourself, no, Stuart, wait till I'm done and then you can do whatever it is you want to do, but not with me. Okay. Right? Yeah. You can drop me off. Come on, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Something touched my leg. It really did touch my leg. Right. It went like that. It was. Sure Sorry, I'm... Are, <laughs> it wasn't you, was it? We signed it. <laughs> Do something else. No, come on, I want to go no, now. What, what, what happened? Just tell me what happened. What happened? Something smacked into my leg really heavy. Come what, your left leg? Yes. Well, I was on your right side, right. so can, how, it couldn't be me. Just, get, can we just, just drop me off and you can come back if you like. That's well, I'm here, I'm here, don't worry. I'm here, don't worry, I'm here. On this side, on this side, on this side. Please tell me you bothered me just heard that then. Heard what? The two bands from in there. Yeah. From in there? There's somebody up there, isn't there? Yes, definitely. We've been hearing noises, it's just difficult to tell where they're coming from. There's clicking, mm -hmm. slight clicking sounds, isn't there, from next door, but with the window being open, it could be anything. How are you feeling, Jeff? I'm still a bit worried about the dog. I don't think there's one up there. And we all heard it. We'll find out. We'll go and ask in a minute. Yeah. I want to get that one now on the head and then I'll be fine. It's a bit, it was a bit weird to go up there the second time. And nothing. And absolutely nothing. Having persuaded themselves that the animal noise had been real and not ghostly, Kieran, Ian and Jeff failed to explain the other bumps and bangs that they had heard and finally called it a night. However, on hearing of the experiences of the others in the kitchen area, Carl, Stuart and Kath went down there to see what else they could uncover. We've literally only been here a couple of seconds and we haven't even been into this next room yet. And it's slowed down a little bit now. But this ladle is actually moving. There's no breeze here at all. I just heard a clicking over there. Where? Where? Yeah, I constantly feel like something's behind me. Was that you? You didn't just blow my ear. What did you feel? 
And I, I was just standing there, pointing into that corner. And I just said, is anyone there? Is anyone there? And I thought you had come up to me going, no. Not, not sort of like you said, I no, no. breathe heavy in my ear. I don't mean to blow in my ear, mm-hmm. but, but a few of them. Is that, where's that ladle? What's happening with that? Let's have a look. No, it stopped. There was a noise. What did you hear? I, it was, I, I thought I heard a footstep, like, but it wasn't still. Like that, did you hear it? There's ears, listen. It's weird, isn't it? It comes and goes. But is there anything else you can do? Move something? Oh, that scared the shit out of me, that did. Well, what? What? What is it? Nothing in? <sighs> Can't see anything. What's that? Somebody in the room. Where? Can you hear them moving? Where? In, in the park. No, you're joking, Kat. No, I swear. Go on, get, get around, get around, get around, get around. What? I could hear movement. What did you see in there? I just heard it. It was like some... Like that. Like that kind. Mm-hmm. Like placing a metal object yeah, down on the top, it. yeah. That ladle's moving from side to side. The big dish one, Carl. This one? Yeah. It's It's moving ever so. That stopped dead, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So if it is moving, when it's wrong, we can... What the f***? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is it? Is it cupboard opening? Hey! This what? That cupboard. Look. Look, where, where, where? The cupboard's opened. It has. I heard it. it. Has. What's that? <gasps> what is? What the f- is that? that? That was over there. I saw. I saw a movement over there. <gasps> That's moving again. With Kath clearly affected by the intensity of the activity, we decided to bring an end to the investigation. Tatton Park Mansion had been a night of surprises. How would Dr Kieran O'Keefe rationalise our experience? Tatton Park Mansion was an interesting location for most haunted to investigate. In one particular vigil, Kath, Carl and Stuart investigated the kitchen and scullery area. There was a noise. What did you hear? I, it was, I, I thought I heard a footstep, but it wasn't still. Far more evidential is when a spoon was actually thrown at Kath. <laughs> it appears as though this spoon did belong to the kitchen. Was it resting precariously on one of the surfaces and somebody accidentally knocked it? We just don't know. So it's very difficult to interpret that phenomena as paranormal. During one of the vigils, there was tapping, and attempts to try and communicate with the source of this tapping didn't reveal a very fruitful conversation. It's that heartbeat noise again, Mm. listen. Do you need our help? What's that? I didn't hear that. I just heard one. There wasn't a lot of detail that was coming from the tapping. And so it's very difficult to assess whether it was actually coming from a spirit or whether there are any noises occurring naturally because of creaking floorboards, because of people elsewhere in the building. Tatton Park Mansion is an amazing building full of benign female energy and some not so pleasant poltergeist activity. It had been an experience we would not easily forget. Until next time, sleep tight. (laughs) 